So uh, this is a game, Meeple Circus, that I heard. I don't know when I first heard about it because it's pretty new. Like it's weird. It feels like the term Meeple Circus, like is just like the first time I heard it. It didn't feel new. It felt like. There's always been a Meeple Circus. Yeah, the Meeple Circus of every tabletop game ever because pretty much anyone who plays tabletop games, what do you do when you're bored because jo- JoJo takes forever on his fucking turn? Right, it's, it's like whenever it's your tur- when it's not your turn in a tabletop game, you're sitting there and in front of you, you're playing Settlers. You got a bunch of pe- little houses and yep. sticks or Meeples and you play with them. That's just what you naturally do. What Meeple Circus, the actual game does. If you've a, ever played Settlers, you know makes, exactly how high right. you can stack all your pieces. Right. It is a game in which you stack wooden board game pieces competitively. Now, and there that are, is the official game. It's not like a thing you do while you're bored. Now, there are a lot of tabletop games like Via Paletti or Jenga or Rhino Hero that involve some sort of stacking component. There are lots of construction games and destruction games. We've right? reviewed many of them on Geek Nights. And a lot of them have similar problems. The one problem being, well, one person knocks it down, does everyone else win? That's kind of lame. Or one person knocks it down via Paletti, and now we have a really ham-fisted and kind of crappy scoring mechanism to determine who won Yep. that really removes the skill component. Mm-hmm. So Meeple Circus is one of the rare stacking pieces games that has a pretty legit win condition and is about your skill of stacking and doesn't seem to have a very low skill cap. Mm -hmm. Because many of the games that try to solve this problem end up having such a low skill cap that over the course of a PAX, everyone in our group is playing perfectly and the game is boring. So pretty much how it works is the app. It's an app-controlled game. But the app does not actually do much. The app is mostly a timer. It just plays a song. Yeah. Uh, it's a timer with a circus song. It, it anyway. plays the did it did it did it song. So and the circus has three acts, right? And in the first act, you got a pretty simple circus. You don't have a lot of pieces to work with. And you know, you build a l- everyone is simultaneously making, you know, it says like it's like the timer starts and everyone has to build their circus, and you're trying to arrange the meeples in such a way according to the rules that they are worth the most points for you. For example, there might be bonus points for putting a purple guy on top or something, right? Or like you get if you get a red guy, that you have a measuring stick for how high is your red guy off yep. the ground. And right? some guys can't be on the ground or they don't get points. Some guys can't be under another guy. Yep. Some guys are just animals. Each meeple has different rules. There's camels and elephants and sticks and balls and barrels and all sorts of I like pieces. the strong man. There's a strong man, there's a there's there's generic acrobats, there's all kinds of different meeples. They all do different things. You want to stack them in different ways. Uh, and then you go after you do that, everyone gets points. You do round two, which is pretty similar to round one, only now everyone has even more meeples and it gets a little crazy. Because you're doing this draft mechanic where you know what's likely to like what the scoring things are, like what will be scored. And then you're sort of drafting to collect pieces. Like I'll take this card that gives me two of the blue guys and an elephant. Yep. So you do round two. It's the second act of the circus. And then the third act of the circus. This is where shit gets crazy, right? In the third act of the circus, everyone goes individually one at a time, not simultaneously. And while you're doing this, not only do you have to construct something according to the same rules and get the most points, not only do you have even more meeples than before, but you have to do some sort of performance aspect, right? For example, what was one of them where you say, like, hop every time you place a certain thing or something? Yep, so basically, in the first two rounds, everyone builds their thing simultaneously. When the timer runs out, whatever's standing, that's what gets scored. But then in the third one, you all take turns being the audience, and they'll then, like, the person will have a rule, like, clap your hands every time you place a piece. So I place a piece, clap my hands, place a piece, clap my hands. You have to actually do a performance for the third act of the circus, and that gets you points if you succeed at it. If you if you miss up clapping once, this is why the other people aren't doing it simultaneously. They're judging your clapping. They're like, yep, he clapped. Oh, nope, she didn't clap. Nope. Now, the good news is they're all objective things. There's no ambiguity as to yeah, whether or no, not they did a, it. They're very well written. You're not going to be able to, like, unfair. You're never going to have a question of, like, was that a clap? You know, but, it's like, no, it's pretty clear. The most fun part of that piece of the game is that, one, everyone, people tend to choke in that part, and that's just really funny to watch. You got one shot. You still got the timer. You're all by yourself. Everyone's looking at you. Yep. When I mess up in the first round, no one really notices because they're busy with their own crap. And you're performing, right? It's like it's like more circus role-playing, even though you're still just stacking meeples together. But two, you don't 
say anything if you're in the audience if the person messes up their performance. Mm-hmm. Like if they forget to clap once, well, I can already I can lost roll, the I can role play the audience. Boo. No, no, the audience just be quiet. Don't let them know. So they keep doing it, not realizing that they failed long ago. Oh no, but I could I could just boo at their bad circus. Oh yeah, yeah I guess I'm you not could. satisfied. That clown sucks. <laughs> boo. boo. And if Dumbo comes out, yay. <laughs> so the game was set up in the first look area. At PAX, which is a pretty good area in general. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an aside, but I think it's worth it to talk about. It's an about area it. that was created at Unplugged. And PAX it's Unplugged, the tabletop we, PAX. We scooped up some games from Essen, like board games that aren't like published widely in the U.S. yet. The kind of games you can't get at your game store. There's only a few copies so far, like preview copies, stuff like that. Games that are like the newest, newest hotness. They're not going to be in the library. No one's going to bring them to PAX. These are like the only copies you're going to see for like maybe another few months before they come out in the game store. And here they are at PAX. They're set up already on tables where they have a permanent home. You sit down and play them when no one else is playing them. And and unplugged, these games were highly trafficked in a very visible area. You couldn't sit down to play any of them because everyone was board game fans playing them all the time. But at PAX South, they were in the back and hidden and no one noticed them or cared about them. And they weren't on the printed books in the map or anything. So you could totally go over there if you knew what was what and play them to your heart's content. So I really like Meeple Circus, and I think a lot of people would probably enjoy it and should buy it, but I don't think it's a game that I would buy myself. Mm. The, the, the few problems I see with it, based on talking to people who have played it a bunch more, or people who were, say, enforcers observing people playing this game over the course of entire packs, is that if you play this game more than occasionally, you can pretty much get to the point of perfectly stacking every time and never making a mistake. I played the game one time, and I got the maximum points available to me based on the, the cards that were available in the game. I could not have gotten any more points than I was gotten. And it reminds me actually a lot in that way with Potion Explosion. Yep. And Potion Explosion is a game with a fun gimmick, this marble machine, and Meeple Circus is a fun gimmick, an app, and stacking all kinds of cool meeples. But there's a you the way the me- scoring mechanism works is there's a maximum score you can get and you either hit the maximum or you don't. In Potion Explosion, it's two potions a turn. And in Meeple Circus, it's just all your meeples stacked correctly. What did you draft and what gets scored? Yep. So as long as your stacking skill is up to snuff and you're not a small child or someone you know who can't stack meeples for some reason, uh, you're going to get the maximum points. And the game comes down to the drafting part. Uh, so it's just the drafting part. And I think, you know, on the one hand that reduces the replay value of Meeple Circus itself. But on the other hand, I don't think the game is actually a problem. I think the problem is simply that the game needs more pieces to make it harder. It Mm. needs an expansion or something to where it's like, all right, no, no, no. Literally, you're going to have so many Meeples and so many things going on that are so ridiculous. You cannot score maximum points, you know, but you got to calculate what the best you think you can do is and then it's like, all right, I've, I, this is the best I think I can do, but I could get one more guy standing on yep. a ball. Do I go for it or not? You know, meanwhile, you know, like the we, app is going. Doo, 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 like we've all been watching the Olympics lately, you know, the figure scene and all that. So think of it, if the game had a little more components, it has this aspect now, which is this aspect breaks down among skilled players mm-hmm. that you choose how ambitious you want to be. Mm-hmm. And you can, if you increase your maximum score, by trying something that's very difficult, that might pan out, or you might knock it down at the last second and score nothing. Yep. So if you added a few more pieces, I think you could extend that the feeling. Game, the game needs to give you more pieces and more scoring mechanisms to the point at which nobody can possibly get the maximum score possible with their own meeples unless they're a god uh, of perfect balance and, and yeah. whatnot, right? Plus, you know, the imperfections of the meeples themselves and the table you're playing on and all that right, comes into play. Um such that you have to figure out how much you're going to risk. Are you going to go for that crazy move where you get four r- perfectly round things all stacked on each yep. other or not? Right? Are you going to go for it? How high do you want to ma- put a stick vertically, which you're not allowed to do, actually. But, you know, just to get your red guy even higher, you're going to put another elephant up at the top. <laughs> So there is one problem with the game. Wait a minute. I'm looking at the back of the box. I think it shows a stick vertical. It really? totally does. There's a vertical stick. I think there was a rule that there's like pieces had to be played in a certain way. So this something. is a problem with the game. The rules as they are in the printing that we had access to. Oh, they're not re- real well written enough. Are ambiguous to the point that they are unusable. Mm-hmm. 
And we had to make a lot of value judgments as to how pieces could actually be played. Can I lay this elephant on his side? What about upside down? Can I put the stick vertically? People, people who taught us the game said things were not allowed that are clearly drawn on the back of the box. Mm -hmm. So that is a problem, and I don't know if there's official errata or anything yet. We didn't look into that. We kind of just didn't care. Yeah, it's not, it's not a game that's so serious that it's worth your time to look into that. But yeah, there are some questions, like can an elephant be laying on its side or does it have to be standing up? It can definitely be on its head or standing yep. up, but can it be on its side? I don't know. I uh, put my camel's humps down. Oh, yeah. The pieces are well designed, though, in that they're mostly capable of similar or equivalent scores. Yeah, there's like a highly varied uh, and interesting collection of different kinds of meeples that have interesting shapes. Like, you know, you set a camel up. It's like, okay, you got this round ball that will roll around. You just put a camel and put the ball between its humps, and now yep. you get a guy standing on that. And now you got a guy standing on a ball, and you got points, right? Or you can be like me and balance a guy standing on a ball like a badass. Now, the game does have an app, and it's sort of required, but all the app does, the only thing it does, is play the timer of how long you have on your turn. But the circus music is essential. It plays some did 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 it style circus music. Mm -hmm. And it has, now it has some symbols, like shh, and they'll come in in different intervals to sort of tell you when you're running out of time. But I will admit, I actually would have preferred to just have a, a countdown timer mm. telling me exactly how many seconds I had left because I didn't play the game enough times to internalize what the... Like, everyone seemed to be very worried time would run out and well, then we were, we, I think part of it was that we were keeping the app off to the side. We should have put the app front and center on the table so it could be more visible. True, true. But still, the, the, the app gives you a lot more time than you think, but... You'll have to play it a bunch to internalize I never, I was never, the symbols. I played, you know, somewhat hurriedly, not super rushed, but I always came in under the clock. It was never, uh, uh, at least not as I, I maybe I'm remembering wrong because my memory is awful, but I don't remember. One time being I knocked my thing over and I couldn't rebuild the entire thing in time before the time ran yeah, out. Yeah, but you could still build. How? Just get as many points as you can. Yeah, I built something. Yeah, it wasn't great. No. But I feel like, I don't know if I want to own this game, because I own a lot of games, and I don't know how much play it would get if I tried to play right. it a lot. I feel like this is the kind of game where it's like, if someone else busts it out, I'll play it. If there's an expansion, I definitely want to play it again, for sure. I want to see an expansion that it adds a, a round where you have to yeah. do a dexterity, like, flick kind of thing. Ooh. But like, yeah, I feel like if I bought it, it wouldn't get played really very much at all, but... The one case where I would buy it is if I was in some sort of family situation with small children oh, or yeah. with anyone who was below a school. Any situation where you can have a lot of players who are below the skill cap who will not get perfect uh, you know, stacking every time. Like if I hosted game nights for like different people on a regular basis as opposed to just like our local friends, I would probably have this and bust it out. It's the kind of game where like People, are, I don't know who's going to want to play this game over and over and over again, but you can playing it for the first time is a hella blast. So as long as you keep playing it with different people all the time, you definitely want to you know, get a copy. Yeah, because right? it so does make a spectacle. It's, a, it's definitely got to go into a gaming library. It's got to go at a convention. It's got to go at a school. It's got to go at a meetup. Right? If you set this up somewhere, like in the middle of a like mid-tier convention or like a meetup or something, it'll gather a crowd of people who will just want to watch. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, and people who want to play it like one, two, three times. Yep. You know, some children might get hooked on it and keep playing, but I think adults will play a few times and be done. Yeah, I met some people at PAX who had played it to the point that they had completely ruined it and there was no further replay value at all. Mm -hmm. But but I think an expansion that's complex enough could make it fun for quite a while. I feel like one, especially if you added in stuff like you just said, like the yeah, flicking, I, the one, flicking mode. One like flick, like round one, do a stack. Round two do a trick. Mm -hmm. Round three, do a stack. Round four, the performance that involves a stack and a dexterity move. Right, so I think, I think the way you do it, I think you would set it up like, all right, you make your stack, you score it, and then you have to do the trick after. Oh, your, but your trick the is, stack. Your trick is going to mess up your thing, right? Yep. Or do it separately. It's like, okay, you have to make a stack, and you have to set up a trick and execute the trick separately. Like, okay, I'll make a seesaw here and flick a guy, and he has to, you know, I'll make a human cannonball over here and get a guy to hit another guy. Good, I did it. And now I'll make my stack. Something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. But at least as it is, Despite its minor flaws, in terms maybe of... Maybe add like a, another act to the circus, and that's the act yeah. where you do a trick. So it's like stack, trick in act two, and then act three, you know, I don't know. Because the game, 
The game took a while to play, but a lot of that was debates over what was legal placement. Oh, Do yeah. again to the poorly written rules. The game did not take long at all because rounds one and two are completely simultaneous. So no matter how many players you have, round one and two will always take the same amount of time, which is less than 15 minutes yep. if you include the scoring. And then the round three is going to increase linearly based on how many players you have, but it only goes up to how many players? Five, maybe? Two to five. Yeah, so if you have five players, you know, it takes maybe what? It's going to take you another, I don't know, 30 minutes at the most with and five players. And I've seen people, people said so they do this. So that means that puts this game under an hour with five players. I, people at PAX explicitly said they do this. If they have a four-player game, two of the people will do their performances in the third round simultaneously, and each one has a judge. Yeah. And then they swap. That'll speed things up. That'll literally cut the time in half for but the last will, round. But you will lose the enjoyment of seeing everyone's performance. Yep. But you do not need the app. That is one thing to make clear. The app is just a timer. No, in XCOM, you need the app. You do not need it in uh, Meeple Circus. Because when I sat you down, still probably want to use I it. I sat down at the table. I was like, I want to play this game. And then the guy who's going to teach us is like, all right, do you have the app? And immediately I was like, oh, maybe I don't want to play this. Mm. But then he was like, no, no, no. It's just a timer. Yep. You don't actually need it. Mm hmm. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good game. There's a lot of people who probably should buy it. It's not I can't, one. I did the most thing. I just can't believe no one did this earlier. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, how does well, this not already exist? I feel like there are a lot of Americana style board games that do this in a very simple manner. I'm talking about manner. this specific thing of make a game out of the fact that everyone stacks meeples all the time. Yeah. Everyone does this thing. Maybe we should make a game Brand out it of it. the right way. Why call did them that, meeples. I've been stacking meeples since 2000 oh something. Why did it take until 2018 <laughs> for this game to come out? But uh, if any of you do have it and you bring it to a PAX, I'll probably play it at least once. Yeah, I'd play it like once, you know, yeah. at a convention. Sure. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>